So we've got a problem. The mass airflow sensor won't tune, and I'm going to tell you why. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and we are in the next kind of portion of Project Super Auto, tuning Project Super Auto. And I went out the other day and I kind of did something. I flipped it over to Mass Airflow to verify that it wouldn't tune. I had a pretty good uh, suspicion that it wasn't going to. I talked about this in previous videos, but we're going to dive into it a little bit uh, deeper today. Take a look at why it won't, some of the things that we see in the log, some of the adjustments that we made to, to the tune and see how it responds. But before we do that, I got a couple things to get out of the way. Thank you to all the new subscribers out there. And of course, thank you to the sponsors. Make sure you check out the websites goatropegarage.com we actually have classes set up for august there's going to be three separate classes all of them are being held on a sunday third gen fourth gen fifth gen tuning fundamentals and basics they're a two-hour class there are seats available so go over to the website and check that out you can also find a link on there to our patreon where you can get tuning assistance uh you know just standard patreon kind of setup if you're unfamiliar with it you sign up you have a monthly fee that you pay and you can cancel anytime but it gets you access to tuning assistance so check out the patreon also don't forget about tuning101.com that web address takes you right to our homepage. click the playlist button there is a ton of playlist with a bunch of tuning information a lot of it's broken out by topics or generation so if you're looking for specific topics Double check there. If you can't find it there, let me know and I'll try and do a video about it. So getting back to the mass airflow sensor, we have an issue where it will not tune. And I talked about this earlier because our mass airflow sensor is, is uh, really close to the throttle body. We're running a healthy cam and it's just not ideal in any way. Let's take a look at it. As you can see here, here's our section of pipe with our mass airflow sensor in there. We do have a barometric breakout, which you're gonna be required to run whenever you're running uh, some kind of boost with the sensor after the boost. That way it, the pressure ratio, specifically on Gen 5s, needs to be able to calculate barometric uh, pressure. Not an issue so much on Gen 4 and definitely not on Gen 3. Uh, but given our layout with the air-to-water intercooler here and we're coming out of a 90, small straight section right back into a 90. This is less than ideal and I knew that from the get-go. I was interested to see what would happen. We actually have a fairly... Uh, you know, close to the same size section down underneath here where we could move it in line before the uh, air to water intercooler. But if we do that, then we need to break out the intake air temp sensor because we want to see the lowest intake air temp that's actually going in after the air to water intercooler because that is going to affect our timing tables. Now we could go in, uh, blow those timing tables out, and but ideally we do want to adjust our timing based on temperature. So the idea is we can move this down below, do a breakout, and put it up here. What's happening is because of this 90 here, we're getting airflow, especially at low RPMs, that is not really engulfing the mass airflow sensor very well, and so it cannot consistently read. On top of it with a healthy cam and being this close to the throttle body, we are getting some reversion in the intake track. And that just means that with the overlap that we're seeing on the cam, there's pulsations on the air that is being draw drawn in. And so every once in a while, this thing is basically reading no airflow. Not necessarily, but if you were to look at the frequency at idle, it, it jumps a lot. You're not in steady state. Mass airflow sensors are designed to measure airflow in steady state. Now, what can we do about it? Well, we're already tuning the speed density table. And by doing so, we can come back in here and enable the mass airflow sensor at a higher RPM. And what we'll have to do if we were to leave it here is tune with dynamic airflow on and then set a filter up based on our switchover point or whenever we're in high speed mode, which means basically mass air is doing the majority of the calculations. As we've touched on the past, even in high speed mode, we're still referencing the VE table, but all of the fueling is being pulled from the mass airflow sensor unless there is a correlation error. And that's what actually killed the motor, as you guys well know, uh, because there was such a huge error in the correlation error on a transient, it went back over to the VE table and touched an area that had not been updated in the tune. So the approach of the mass airflow sensor being the easy thing to tune is not working in this situation because 
Well, it's just not that easy to tune in this situation. Now, we do, as I said, have a lot of straight sections. And the straight sections, the important part about that is it creates laminar flow. The longer the section is, it gives the air more time to smooth out and then go across the hot wire sensor and the mass airflow sensor in a fa orderly fashion, which then allows this thing to calculate properly because it is based off of your intake tubing diameter. And so once we get this thing dialed in, technically the, even the one that was dialed in beforehand should correctly read because it's on a three inch pipe, was on a three inch pipe. That does not change the amount of air, only changing the diameter of the pipe is going to change the amount of air. Now we would hit new sections of the mass airflow sensor by going into higher boosts, things like that. But up until the boost point that we saw previously, this thing should have been pretty accurate. It is not. Let's take a look at the logs. Okay, so we've got the logs pulled up here. This is three different logs from tuning the map, making adjustments. And in fact, let's look at the actual tune first. We've got a start off point here. This is kind of where we were at going into this process. A little bit rough down here, but nothing bad. The funny thing is after making some applied changes to this to try and fix it, to, en to enrich it because it was showing that we uh, needed more fuel, we got a nice smooth curve up here, but let's look at the actual data itself. So throughout, this is our first one here saying that we've been too rich. Pretty straightforward across just saying that we're 10% too rich. That's probably a bad sell of data. Then we go into our next one here. After a change, still about 10%, and it responds a little bit higher in the upper frequencies. And that's because in the upper frequencies, we have more consistent air going through. So we're actually responding appropriately up there and lowering that error a little bit. But if you look down below, we're still at that 10 plus percent rich around idle. And then finally, let's look at this one. Yeah, this is where it gets real crazy. Just out of nowhere, we're still reading 10 percent rich after yet another change. And then we go to, holy cow, we're extremely lean just mind-blowingly lean right through this section. And this is not true. This is just bad airflow on the mass airflow sensor. So you would not be able to get this thing dialed in at idle on mass airflow sensor. You would be chasing your tail for eternity and more because it's going to be different every time. This is not something that we can actually go in, get consistent data from, and level things out. And that is because, as I said, placement, camshaft, just the dynamics of the way the engine breathes down low. The speed density table, volumetric efficiency, that stuff responds a lot better to this kind of situation. There is some filtering on there that says, okay, hey, this is what our manifold air pressure is reading, and we are going to kind of extrapolate that out in the air fuel calculation to give it some time uh, because we're not seeing any throttle changes. So it kind of averages itself out and it allow it to run a lot smoother. It's not bouncing around quite a bit. Now, we still do have an issue. A lot of what you're seeing here is going to be tied back to the bypass valve still trying to flutter. Surprisingly, though, where we're set up now, we are always in vacuum. So the bypass valve never goes full closed anymore. But just that fluttering of the valve is yet another thing that is causing us to get all kinds of air reversion because we're surge of air, then all of a sudden it drops off. And as I said, as far as the mass airflow sensor, it's almost as if the motor stops breathing air. If we look down, we're going down to 1800 hertz, which is very low. Let's check the other one, see how low we go. 1800, 1350. 1350 is just right on the cusp of not even running as far as this is concerned. If you look at where we're at with our calculations at 1350, I mean, we're running way down here. That is the very bottom end of what we should see on the mass airflow sensor. Okay, so what's next? Well, obviously we continue on with speed density. We get up into the full range of that. Uh, we will choose a breakover point on the mass airflow sensor at some point in time here. Probably around 2,500 RPMs is gonna be our dynamic switch from standard dynamic normal air calc mode into high speed. We'll test that out, see if we can get repeatability at that point in time. And then, as I said, we'll go through setting up a graph that has filters set up on it that only log 
the math error whenever we're in high speed. There's a couple ways that we can do that. We'll dive into that in a future video. Uh, we're coming along pretty nice. We've gotten her up to about 10 PSI so far, maybe 4,000 RPMs. Uh, so I'm very happy with the progress that we've made so far. Uh, that pretty much sums it up. It's very interesting to see these situations play out where we can actually see that something is not working, something that we often talk about being an issue, but having it right in front of you where you're seeing that issue come to life is always interesting. And so I thought I would share it with you guys. That way, if you're ever kind of in this predicament where for some reason the mass airflow sensor is just not responding to save its life, it might give you some insight as to what is going on there. So I got to get back to work. I want to thank everybody as usual for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.